Okay, problem number seven says the total area of the rectangular floor below is 5 over x, and the area of the black area is 5 over x plus 1. What is the area of the white area? Well, you take your entire area and subtract off your black area, and you'll get uh, the area of the white section. So, in other words, we need to... In other words, we need to take the area of the white section, or the whole, th the whole thing, which is 5 over x, and we need to subtract off the area of the black section. So we need to take 5 over x, and we need to uh, subtract off the uh, 5 over x plus 1. And to do that, we have to get a common denominator, common denominator which would be x times x plus 1. Now, what section in this common denominator that's not in this one? Well, an x plus 1, and we need to take that x plus 1 times that numerator, which is 5. So we need to take 5 times x plus 1, and do the same thing here, minus what's extra in this denominator that's not in this denominator? An x, so we need to take that x times 5 to get 5x. Now simplifying this, we could take the 5 through to get 5x plus 5 minus 5x. Well, the 5x minus 5x is 0. And all we're left with on the top is 5 times 1, which is 5. So we get 5 over x times x plus 1. And that would be the answer to uh, problem number 7. Problem number 8 says if 5 to the x equals y and y squared uh, equals, let me make that in here, equals z, uh, then what does y squared equal? Well, y squared would be uh, take this value for x, uh, what, what y is, 5 to the x, and we need to square it. So in other words, if y equals 5 to the x, then y squared equals 5 to the x squared. Now when you have exponents raised to exponents, you multiply, so that would give us 5 to the uh, 2x power, okay? Now 5 to the 2x is the same as, uh, let me just go somewhere here and write this, is the same as uh, 5 to the uh, 2 raised to the x power, okay? By the same idea, x uh, 5 to the x raised to the 2 is the same as 5 to the second raised to the x. And now at this point, 5 to the second is 25, and that's raised to the x. And that's actually a possible choice, and that's choice B on that problem. Okay, on problem number 9, it says, uh, let's go down to that problem. It says, which of the following are positive in the third quadrant? Cotangent sine, secant cosine, or none of these. Okay, well, let's see. Positive in the third quadrant. Well, the third quadrant is this quadrant right here when you're graphing. It goes around counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. When you think sine, well, sine is, think of your y values. So that'd be positive in the first and second quadrant, not the third. Uh, when you think cosine, think x, and x is positive in the first and fourth. Now, cotangent and tangent are both positive in the first and third. And the question one is, which is positive in the third quadrant? Out of all those choices, the only one that is, is cotangent, which is choice A. Okay, problem 10 says, in the xy plane, the point 2, 2 is on the circle centered at the origin. What is the radius of the circle? Okay, well, let's take a look at this a second. And what I did is I drew a circle and uh, it's centered at the origin, it's the point zero, 0, and there's a point on the circle at 2, 2, it says, right here at 2 to the right, 2 up. What is the radius? Well, a lot of people would guess 2, but it's not. The radius is the distance out here, and actually that's the hypotenuse of a circle, of a triangle that has a height of 2 and a uh, length of 2. So if we uh, draw that, then we got something that's 2 here and 2 here, and we're looking for this side. I'll call it uh, uh, R for the radius. Okay, well, that's actually the hypotenuse of a triangle, and the Pythagorean theorem says that the radius squared, or the hypotenuse squared, is equal to uh, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that would be 2 squared plus 2 squared. So that gives me R squared is equal to 4 plus 4, or 8. So what is R equal? Well, R then equals the square root of 8. Take the square root of both sides, the square root of 8. Now, what's the square root of 8? Well, the square root of 8 is the same as the square root of 2 times 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and I have a leftover square root of 2 in there. So the answer is 2 square roots of 2.
Okay, on problem 11 it says if the roots of the equation, that's the same as the x-intercepts of the equation, x squared plus 12x equals negative 32, and uh, if the x-intercepts or roots are p and t, and p is less than t, what does p equal? Well, the first thing we need to do is get what the x-intercepts are of this equation. So here's the equation written down, x squared plus 12x equals negative 32. I took the minus 32 to the other side to get x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0. This thing factors into uh, x and x, signs are the same, both positive, and factors of 32 that add up to 12 are 4 and 8, and that gives me solutions of x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 8. Now on that problem, so that's the solutions, but on that problem it says that p is less than t. Well, what number is less than the other number? Well, negative 8 is less than negative 4. So therefore, if p is less than t, then your p must be negative 8, and your t must be negative 4. Now, if you check the choices on here, uh, it gives you, for example, uh, it, it asks, what does p equal? And one of them is 2t. And if you take 2 times negative um, uh, 4, you will get negative 8. So the right answer to that problem is um, p equals 2t. And I'll stop it there, and we'll pick up uh, on the next video.